പരാത്മാനമേക ജഗദ്ദീജമാദ്യം നിരീഹം നിരാകാരമോങ്കാർവേദ്യം പാല്യേന വിശ്വം തമീഷം ഭജേലീയത്ര വിശ്വം ഡിയർ ഡിവോട്ടീസ് So today we are into the 8th session of this 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So you may remember what we discussed in the last class. In the last class and even before that, what is the true nature of Ishwara? was presented to us just to remind all of you that this 13th chapter is essentially concerned with the presentation of the true nature of ishwar this we should keep it in mind ishwarasya tatva nirdharanartham kshetra adhyaya arabhyate shankaracharya says this kshetra adhyaya this 13th chapter has been commenced in order to ascertain the true nature of Ishwara. We are all the aspirants of Ishwara. Every Bhakta, every Jnani, every Sadhaka's main concern is the experience of Ishwara. But we need to understand what is the true nature of Ishwara. Ishwara as Ishwara is. not as we imagine about it it's a big difference between our imagination of ishwara and ishwara as ishwara is so in the verses from 12 to 17 if you remember the true nature of ishwara has been presented initially the true what is kshetra was presented and then what is this kshetragya and the true nature of kshetragya was presented from verses 12 to 17 geyam yat tat pravakshyami yad gyatva amritam ushnute anadi mat param brahma nasat tanna satuchate sarvata pani padam tat sarvato kshishiro mukam in this way the verse goes goes on till verse 17 the true nature of ishwara has been presented there and then krishna also presented the ways to attain the true nature of ishwara that is very important ishwara's tatva nirdharanam alone is not sufficient we need to know what are the different ways to experience this ishwara tatva so beautifully krishna says dhyane atmani pashyanti kechid atmanam atmana anye sankhena yogena karma yogena chapare anye तु एवं अजानंत श्रुवा नेभ्य उपासते ते पिचाति तरंते मृत्युम श्रुतिपरायण सो फोर मेथड्स हैव बीन प्रेजेंटेड हियर वन इज ध्यान योग सेकंड इज सांख्य योग थर्ड इज कर्म योग एंड द फोर्थ इज दोस पीपल हु कैन नॉट प्रैक्टिस डिस्क्रिमिनेशन हु डोंट हैव द एलिजिबिलिटी टू गो इनटू दिस हायर प्रैक्टिसेस they are not capable to do discrimination on their own but they are extremely devoted to the words of a wise person they are devoted to the words of the wise person and they cling to it they are shruti parayana they take the words of the guru the guru tells gives one instruction they don't look into the other things of the scriptures and all those things because they are not ready for it and holding on to that beautiful instruction coming from the wise person that becomes the course of spiritual practice for them so in that verse if you remember 
Krishna had told, what is meditation? Beautiful thing, very important thing. Meditation is that in which initially the first step is withdrawing the sense organs from the sense objects. Then withdrawing the sense organs into the mind and then withdrawing the mind into the Atman. So it's a progressive withdrawal from everything that is external. We are withdrawing ourselves from all external engagements and we turn our attention to that which is inside us, the Kshetrankya. And this happens, Taila Dharavat. Taila Dharavat, Avichanna Pratya, Shankaracharya says, just like pouring oil from one vessel to the other, what happens? The oil flows in an unbroken manner. Similar is this flow of this person's mind completely turned away from external things and flowing uninterruptedly towards the self, the Kshetrakya. What a beautiful thing it is. But this comes after a prolonged many years of practice. And this practice completely stands on the spirit of Vairagya, dispassion. When we don't have Vairagya, we will fail in meditation. So often when we Many people, they come and ask that we are unable to meditate, mind doesn't get concentrated. The main reason for that is absence of Vairakya, nothing else. Absence of the spirit of detachment. The more we have the spirit of detachment and Viraga, Viraga is the opposite of Raga. The more we have Raga and attachment for this changing perishable dimension, this Kshetra is what? It is the changing dimension. Presently, somehow, owing to ignorance, owing to aviveka, we have become attached, unquestioningly attached to this changing dimension. And because of this attachment, we are unable to focus our mind on the true nature of Ishwara. That is the main flaw. That is the main reason why we fail in meditation. Anyhow, so this was presented in the last class. Actually speaking, the whole thing is over here. The true nature of Ishwara has been presented. What is Kshetra has been presented. How to move towards the true nature of Ishwara, that also has been presented. There is nothing more to be told here. So the remaining verses from verse uh, 26 onwards, from verse 26 to 34. Now, what is presented is just reiteration of this correct vision. Now we are going to discuss two things. Correct vision and incorrect vision or wrong vision. Let's see what it is. That is what now Krishna is talking about in verse 26. From this verse 26, what we have to learn is there are two kinds of vision. Now Krishna will constantly in two, three ways, in two, three verses, he will be talking about how to see correctly, how to see properly. We are seeing incorrectly. In our vision, there is something improper and incorrect. What is that correct vision? We need to correct our vision, just like when we have problem with our so-called this physical eyes. We go to the doctor to correct the vision, isn't it? We put on the spectacles, the doctor puts different lenses and then we correct the perfect vision and we begin to read things correctly. Similarly, here the Guru in the scriptures, they are giving us the right spectacle, the right focus through which we see the reality correctly. Presently, we are not seeing the reality. We are not seeing correctly. We are seeing incorrectly. It is Guru's job. This is the greatest blessing coming from the coming from the Guru and the scriptures. It is Guru and scriptures alone which gives us this correct vision. Corrects our vision. Presently we are suffering from myopia. Myopia is a disease, disease where you don't see things correctly. Now doctor is the person who corrects this vision. 
So Krishna is saying here in the next verse that Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit Sattvam Sthavara Jangamam Kshetra Kshetra Gyasan Yoga Tadvidhi Bharatarshipa This we saw last time. Let us just repeat and go into it once again. Krishna is saying that Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit Whatever object comes into existence in this so-called creation, anything which is coming into existence, that is owing to Kshetra Kshetra Gyasanyoga, owing to the association between the Kshetra and the Kshetra Gya. It is owing to the coming together of these two things. One is Kshetra Gya and the Kshetra Gya. In short, Krishna wants to say that whatever we are seeing here, they are all the combination or the mixture of Kshetra and Kshetrakya. And this we have repeatedly re told. These two things are nothing but the two aspects of Ishvara. But presently, are we understanding it in that way? We are not understanding it that way. We are not understanding things incorrectly. We are seeing this dimension alone, the changing dimension, the Kshetra. This is the perishable dimension where everything is continuously changing. And not only that, here this Kshetra Gya which is imperishable has become identified with Kshetra which is perishable. Kshetra is perishable dimension. And Kshetragya is imperishable dimension which is our true nature. And this Kshetragya has become associated with Kshetra and it has become identified with the Kshetra and that is why there is unending suffering and miseries in life. This is the thing. And this is happening owing to Shankaracharya so beautifully says owing to the lack of discrimination, lack of viveka, means it is happening owing to aviveka, owing to absence of discrimination between what is Kshetra and what is Kshetragya, owing to absence of discrimination between what is perishable and what is imperishable. This imperishable gets mixed up or identified with the perishable and the suffering begins. And then there is no end to the suffering as long as we don't separate it. And the separation takes place through Viveka. Viveka is the only way this discrimination between Kshetragya and Kshetra is the only way to the attainment of Mukti. That is why Shankaracharya is that masterly composition, Viveka Chodamani. Viveka is presented as Chodamani. Chodamani means the crest jewel. The greatest instrument existing in this creation is Viveka. This faculty by which human beings can discriminate between what is perishable and what is imperishable. As long as Viveka is not functioning, when we are dominated by Aviveka, we are identified with Kshetra and Kshetra alone. And when we are identified Kshetra, then we are understanding ourselves wrongly. This is the wrong vision. Presently, what is our idea about ourselves? I means this body. I means Kshetra. We are not Kshetra at all. Presently, the meaning of I is what? Kshetra, this body, which we are not. This is what Shankaracharya refers to as Mithya Jnanam, false knowledge. So, in general, human beings, we are all living in false knowledge. We have taken that which is unreal to be real. This Kshetra dimension is perishable. Actually speaking, by itself it is unreal. Again I repeat, by itself this Kshetra dimension is absolutely unreal. What do we mean by reality? 
Reality means that which never changes, that which never goes away. What are we clinging to here and what is that thing with which we are identified? We are presently identified with that which is continuously changing. It is going away. It will go away. None of these things are going to last here. It is perishing. This body is already dying. It is moving towards death. Even to say that it is moving towards death is a mistaken notion. Life itself means death. It is a mixture of life and death actually. To be alive means to be dying. When we are alive, we are actually moving towards death. It is a strained mixture between life and death, light and darkness. So this is the fact of our existence in ignorance and in avivek. So this is what Shankaracharya refers to as mithya jnanam, false knowledge. False knowledge means to become identified with the kshetra, with this perishable dimension and to unquestioningly take this to be real. Is it not? Presently our um, understanding about this, what we are seeing is what? This is all just real. Nobody questions it. Whereas the fact is, this is just like an elephant created by a magician. Shankaracharya says, a magician, he creates an elephant. Is the created, the magician's creation of elephant, is that elephant real? It is not real. The magician alone is real. Similarly, he gives one, one more example. Just like an object seen in the dream. Is the object seen in the dream actually real? The dreamer alone is real, not the dream. Similarly, here also, all the objects that we are seeing, in itself, it is just like a dream object. It is just like the creation of a magician. Shankaracharya says, it is the mag magician alone is true, not his magic. So, this false knowledge is what? To consider that which is unreal to be real. This is what is Mithya Jnana. And this Mithya Jnana is owing to a vivek, a lack of discrimination. Now, opposite to Mithya Jnana is Samya Jnana. One is Mithya Jnana, other is Samya Jnana. One is false knowledge, other is the right knowledge. One is the false vision or the defective vision and the other is the correct vision. Now what is the correct vision? The correct vision which comes out of Viveka, the correct vision is that I, I am not this perishable dimension. I am the witness of this perishable dimension and the true nature of I is not different from the true nature of Ishvara which is Parabrahman. And then seeing from there one sees things very clearly. This is how we have to correct our vision. Presently our vision that we are considering this which is perishable to be real. This is unreal. To understand this and correct our vision is the main task of our spiritual life. So, now what is this correct vision? Samya Jnanam. That is what is the main subject now from verse 27 onwards till the end of this 13th chapter. What is this correct vision? That correct vision is the vision which the knowers of Brahman, they have it. Brahma Jnanis, they have this correct vision. Those who have realized the truth, they live with this correct vision. They see things correctly. We are not seeing things correctly. And this vision which the Brahmagyanis have, that is something which we have to practice. For the Brahmagyanis, this vision is natural and spontaneous. But for we sadhakas, it is a matter of discipline and practice. That is why here from this verse 27 onwards, the correct vision is presented to us so that we can practice this vision in our life. Now what is that correct vision? Let us see. <coughs> Krishna says, verse number 27, Samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishthantam parameshwaram 
Vinashatsva Vinashyamtam Yah Pashyati Sa Pashyati Beautiful Yah Pashyati Sa Pashyati Here it is the question of seeing correctly Means correcting our wrong vision And bringing the correct vision He is a eye doctor A doctor of the eye Giving us the right vision The scriptures and the guru are those sources from where we can correct our wrong vision and begin to see things correctly. So, ya pashyati, sa pashyati. So, what is this correct vision? Samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishthantam parameshwaram. This parameshwara, this parameshwara which was spoken about from verses 12 to 17, the true nature of Kshetragya, which is Ishvara. That Parameshvara, Samam Tishthati, Samam, Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu, Tishthantam Parameshvara. This Ishvara is existing equally Sarveshu Bhuteshu. And Vinashyatsu Avinashyantam. In the perishable, the imperishable is existing. It's a beautiful vision. Presently we are seeing only the different living beings. We are seeing only the perishable things. We are not seeing the imperishable. For us, that one Parameshwara is not visible to us. Is it not? We are seeing only the many. We are not seeing the one. We are seeing only the many. Many means the perishable dimension the destructible dimension we are only seeing the destructible dimension and we are thinking that this is absolutely real this is the wrong vision but the correct vision will be what to see not only many but to see the one in the many when you begin to see the one in the many samam tish, samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishthantam sarveshu bhuteshu it's extremely beautiful statement in every being, in every living entity, Samam, that Parameshwaram is existing equally, not more, not less. Vinashyatsu, among the perishable, Avinashyantam, the imperishable is existing. Ya Pashyati, Sa Pashyati, one who sees like this, that person alone is seeing correctly. Now see. Now we have to compare here what is our present vision. Our defective vision is what? We are not seeing the one and the many. We are seeing only the many. And even our idea of, of that one is what? It is either limited to a photograph or it is limited to somewhere in a temple. But in the Bhuteshu we are not seeing the one. This is a big defect. Seeing God only in temple not outside seeing Ishwara only in a photograph and nowhere else this is a seriously defective vision it may be good in the earlier stages this is what Swami Vivekananda says that this is the kindergarten of religion to think that God is only in some temple or in some photograph this is the kindergarten of religion so but outside we don't see we are seeing only the many and we are thinking that this is absolutely real this is the defective vision, this is the wrong vision. This is owing to the absence of discrimination, absence of Viveka. But when real Viveka comes, what happens? Then that Ishvara is not limited to some photograph here and there. It is not limited to temple alone. We begin to see one in the many. We begin to see the imperishable in the perishable. It is a beautiful development. So see here Shankaracharya beautifully presents, he says in our spiritual life we have to graduate. We have to graduate from one level to the other. Is it not? That is what we all do in schools. We don't remain in the kindergarten for whole life. From the kindergarten we go to the first grade, second grade, tenth grade, plus one, plus two and then we go to graduation and even beyond that. So spiritual life is similarly, it's a graduation continuously happening. We have to graduate, we have to progress. 
Initially, we are seeing only the many and taking the many alone to be real. This is owing to ignorance and aviveka. From this vision, we have to graduate. The next graduated level is what? That is the seeing the one in the many. Initially, we see only the many and we are not seeing the one. Then from there, we graduate to see one in the many. And final comes the vision where we don't see the many at all. We see only one. What a beautiful vision. So from the many to one in the many to ultimately no many but only one. Seeing Ishwara with the open eyes. This is the line of spiritual growth in our spiritual life. To graduate from our vision of the many to one in the many and from one in the many to one and one alone where many doesn't exist. It is one Ishwara alone is existing with open eyes, with closed eyes. So that is the implication of this beautiful, th this is the vision, this is the Samyak Jnana. And the opposite of that is Mithya Jnana. Mithya Jnana is what? Considering the many alone to be true and we have no idea of that one Ishwara. So this is what Sri Krishna is presenting to us in this beautiful verse. He says, Samam Sarveshu Bhuteshu Tishthantam Parameshwaram. This Parameshwar is existing, Samam, equally. Now, this also has got many implications, amazing implications, if when we put it into practice in our day-to-day -day life. The moment we begin to see the one, the moment we begin to see the imperishable in the perishable, the whole evaluation of the human beings is completely transformed. We begin to see the divinity in the other person. Before that, it is not divinity. We are just seeing the man and the woman in flesh and blood. That's all. We understand only the so-called the perishable dimension. We don't see the imperishable inside the perishable. The moment this vision comes, where we begin to see the one in the many, we will see that everything is divine. Every man is divine. Every woman is divine. Our evaluation and understanding of the other person is completely radically transformed. This is the correction of our vision. The earlier vision was a diseased vision. This is the healthy vision. To see the one in the many. Not that one limited to just temple or one photograph. That is the thing. That the one only in the temple is good in the beginning. But that should not be the end of our spiritual pursuit. That is just a good for the beginning purpose. But in our spiritual sadhana, the real growth is our capacity to see the one in the many. And then, of course, the climax is where the many doesn't exist then. Then it is only the one and one alone, non-dual Advaita. So this is the beautiful implication of this verse. Now from here, this is the same thing, idea is presented to us, the correct vision, which we have to practice, so these things which we have to put into practice. When we put into practice, slowly, what Krishna says here, it will become a fact of our life. <coughs> the verse number 28, in this way, Now, one, when we have this vision of one in the many, it's a beautiful, it's a great a radical shift in our understanding about ourselves in the world. It's a radical shift. It's a very radical shift. Earlier, we were seeing, seeing only the perishable dimension. We were not aware of the existence of the imperishable. Now we are aware of the imperishable in the perishable. It's a radical and is a very dramatic transformed vision. And what is the outcome of this vision? That is what is the content of the next verse. What is the fruit of this vision when we begin to see the one in the many? The fruit is this. Samam pasyan hisar vatra samavasthitam ishwaram 
नहिनस्त्यात्मनात्मानं ततो याति पराम गतिम ततो याति पराम गतिम दिस इज द फ्रूट द फ्रूट ऑफ दिस विजन इज व्हाट यू अटेन दैट परागति परागति मींस यू अटेन लिबरेशन नो सी अगेन गोइंग बैक टू श्री रामकृष्ण इज आरती खंडन भव बंधन हाउ इज दिस खंडन भव बंधन गोइंग टू कम it comes from this vision by correcting our defective vision by bringing in our life the correct vision we need to change our vision spiritual life is not only the question of doing some rituals it is a continuous pursuit and effort to change our vision our drishti has to be changed and this happens only when we follow the instructions of the scriptures and the guru there is no other way who gives us this vision just imagine from where is this vision coming to us have you just thought about it it cannot come from any other source apart from the shastras the upanishads and the guru vakya this transformation this radical transformation in our vision in our drishti this is an antar drishti this is a change of a vision which happens inside us through gyana chakshu and through that gyana chakshu we begin to see things differently our whole life itself is transformed it is an indescribable kind of an experience in which all our problems truly speaking comes to an end there and then itself if we get this right vision all our problems come to an end just like as long as you have a defective if your if your focus is uh, disturbed of this physical eye you can't read things correctly you can't see things correctly you see everything double is if i remove my spectacles i'll be seeing all double double here is it not if i remove my spectacles i'll be seeing all everything hazy and defective this is exactly the state of a person who is unenlightened an unenlightened person is seeing everything hazy and not clear he is mistaking one thing for the other this is the state of an unenlightened person but by the grace of the doctor who gives us the right spectacle suddenly what happens we have seen the moment you whenever whenever we have got a new spectacle you just see the first time when you put that spectacle suddenly you you are simply are ki parishkar dekhi how clear i am seeing things so clearly the distant vision is clear the close vision is clear everything is clear the problem is solved this is exactly what happens in spiritual life when as long as unenlightenment exists unenlightenment exists only owing to one thing absence of viveka nothing else absence of discrimination considering that which is unreal to be real this is a viveka this is what causes that haziness of our vision and that is the cause of all the trouble in our life and the moment that right spectacle which is the gift of guru and the shastras when that right spectacle comes to us suddenly the devote that seeker the sadhaka is totally surprised suddenly he begins to see things clearly what he was thinking about this what he is seeing what was his idea about this earlier now that idea is totally changed he is seeing things clearly all the confusion is gone that person's life and personality will be completely transformed completely changed this is the beautiful change which comes so here also now the fruit of this right vision is what so yati param gatim he attains that supreme gati which is liberation so what does this verse says samam pashyan hi sarvatra because of this correct vision samam pashyan hi means because owing to this correct vision samam pashyan hi sarvatra samavasthitam eshwara so what is this correct vision the correct vision is that everywhere that one is existing that one is existing in the many this is the correct vision samam pashyan hi sarvatra samavastitam eshwaram here krishna talks about something very beautiful he says 
न हिनस्त्यात्मनात्मानम् न हिनस्ति आत्मना आत्मानम् ए वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट दिस पर्सन हु हैज गॉट द करेक्ट विजन ही डज नॉट इंजुअ हिमसेल्फ बाय हिमसेल्फ न हिनस्ति हिनस्ति मींस हिंसा he doesn't do himsa to him so his his own self he does not injure himself or herself now what is the meaning of injuring one's own self we don't injure our own self no human being who is sane who is mentally sane will injure one's own self is it not we don't do that physically are we going to injure our own self no normal human being will do that unless somebody is mentally deranged no normal human being will be causing any harm to oneself so why is krishna saying that this person does not injure himself by himself it's a very profound meaning here shankaracharya says what is the meaning of this injuring oneself by oneself shankaracharya says whenever we ignore the ishwara residing in our heart we are causing injury to our own self this is how we injure our own self whenever we ignore the existence of the true nature of ishwara in our heart that is how we are causing injury to our own self so in this sense shankaracharya says we are all in our unenlightened state as long as we are unenlightened we are all continuously injuring our own self by our own self and injuring one's own self by one's own self means what we are doing it by ignore ignoring the god which is residing in our heart that means what you know when we are completely drowned in this perishable dimension alone is this not the state of affairs in this world everyone is completely drowned in this perishable dimension considering it to be absolutely real this is how we are continuously injuring our own self elsewhere shankaracharya in his commentary beautifully he says that vidyamanasya atmana tiraskaranat atmahana iti uchyate he says beautiful we are all committing atmahana atmahana means suicide he uses a very strong word but it's a fact we are all actually suicides suicides means one who kills one's own self we are injuring our own self but how do we kill ourselves when we vidyamanasya atmana tiraskarana tiraskarana means when we ignore when we turn away from god who is residing in our heart we are committing suicide we are injuring our own self now this is the ground reality of this entire humanity which is living in in a state of unenlightenment as long as we are unenlightened owing to lack of discrimination through which what is happening is we are continuously ignoring the ishwara residing in our heart and we are drowned in the perishable dimension we are continuously hurting ourselves we are committing a suicide that is why in vivek chodamani also shankaracharya so beautifully says labdhva katham chit narajanma durlabham tatrapi punstvam shruti paradarshanam yastu atma mukto na yatet moodhadhihi सह्यात्मा स्वम विनिहंति असद्ग्रह सहि आत्मा इज आत्मघाती हु इज आत्मघाती हु इज इग्नोरिंग दिस विद्यमानस्य आत्मरह दिस ईश्वर हु इज एग्जिस्टिंग दिस क्षेत्रज्ञ हु इज एग्जिस्टिंग द ट्रू नेचर ऑफ क्षेत्रज्ञ इज व्हाट ईश्वर वी आर ऑल टोटली ऑब्लिवियस ऑफ द एग्जिस्टिंग एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ दिस क्षेत्रज्ञ and we are drowned in the kshetra is it not kshetra is the changing dimension the perishable dimension who is bothered about kshetra ge here only a sadhaka a bhakta or a gyani begins to become aware of the existence of kshetra ge otherwise everybody is drowned in kshetra and kshetra ge alone kshetra alone 
considering the kshetra to be real this is how we ensure ourselves so here krishna is saying that this enlightened person who has got the right vision and what is the right vision seeing the one in the many his vision is actually focused on in the one even when he is seeing the many he is focused on that imperishable dimension his focus is on that ishvara tattva in everybody this is that right vision and when we have this right vision you are not injuring yourself by yourself and in this way tato yati param gatim this person attains that paragati that paragati is nothing but moksha liberation we become liberated from the cycle of birth and death as long as we don't come to this correct vision this cycle of birth and death keeps on going round and round round and round round and round endlessly there is no end to it shankar ji is a beautiful composition so inspiring dinam api rajani sayam prata shishir vasanto punaraya kala gachati kala kridati gachati ayu tadapi na munchati asha vai भज गोविंदम भज गोविंदम गोविंदम भज मूलमते प्राप्ते सन्निहिते मरणे नहि नहि रक्षति डुंकुर करणे पुनरपि जननम पुनरपि मरणम पुनरपि जननी जठरे शयन इह संसारे खलु दुस्तारे कृपया पारे पाहि मुरारे दिस बर्थ एंड डेथ साइकल गोइंग रिपीटेडली एंड एंडलेसली हाउ मेनी टाइम्स वी हैव एंटर्ड इनटू द मदर्स वोम एंड दिस entering into the mother's womb and again dying again being born again dying again being born this will go on as long as we don't get the right vision as long as this mithya gyanam is not put to an end and as long as we don't get that samya gyanam this mithya gyanam can be put to an end by samya gyanam alone and this is that samya gyanam to see the one in the many to be aware of the one in the many to have our focus always fixed on the one in the many to have our focus fixed on the imperishable in the perishable this is the right vision so beautiful so samam pashyan hi sarvatra samavasthitam ishwaram na hinasti atmana atmanam tato yati param gati this person doesn't hurt himself by himself so we should stop hurting ourselves who wants to hurt oneself and that we can do when we begin to pay attention to this kshetragya when we begin to pay attention to this ishvara tattva which is our true nature the more and more we get connected to our own true nature the divine nature we will stop hurting ourselves otherwise when we are living forgetful of this truth we are continuously injuring ourselves by ourselves ignorantly unknowingly this is happening that is why there is no end to human suffering you may be a rich person you may be having everything as far as this kshetra dimension is concerned money wealth position this is all kshetra only but it is all perishable shariram surupam sada roga muktam yashas charu chitram dhanam meru tulyam guru rangri padme manas chena lagnam tatakyam tatakyam tatakya tatakya so striking words you may be very handsome beautiful young lord of name and fame everything dhanam merutulyam wealth like a huge mountain but in spite of all that if your mind is not surrendered to the words of the scriptures and the guru and if you don't follow the instruction to the scriptures and the guru tatakya 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 what is the point what is the point what is the point what is the point it is all vain it is all absolutely vain it doesn't take us anywhere so this is the right vision which will be correcting our wrong vision the same thing continues in the next verse also where krishna says prakritiyai vacha karmani क्रियमाणाशह यश्यति तथा अकर्ता स पश्यति अगेन एवरी वर्ड इट इज अ पश्यति पश्यति 
यह पश्चति स पश्चति वन हु सीज लाइक दिस ही अलोन सीज करेक्टली इट्स ऑल द करेक्शन ऑफ अवर विजन अवर रॉन्ग विजन इज बींग करेक्टेड बाय द राइट विजन सो अगेन वॉट इज द राइट विजन द राइट विजन इज वॉट प्रकृति एव च कर्माणि क्रियमाणा निसर्वशः ऑल दिस डायनामिज्म व्हिच वी आर सीइंग हियर वी आर ऑलवेज कंफ्यूज विद दिस डायनामिज्म दिस बसिंग एक्टिविटी व्हिच वी आर सीइंग थ्रू आवर सेंस ऑर्गन्स द बॉडी इज एक्टिव द माइंड इज एक्टिव द इंद्रियाज आर एक्टिव एंड वी सी एक्सटर्नली एवरीथिंग इज एक्टिव नथिंग इज स्टेशनरी हियर एवरीथिंग इज कंटीन्यूअसली चेंजिंग हु इज डूइंग दिस who is the doer now because we have become identified with this dimension we are thinking that i am the doer this is the wrong vision and what is the right vision the right vision is to understand that this is all done by maya prakriti shakti this is all the play of shakti she is doing it maya is doing it prakriti is doing it all this changing this kshetra which is the changing dimension which is the perishable dimension it is all what it is prakriti it is maya and what is the status of the atmanam krishna says atmanam akartaram prakriti is doing everything kshetra is doing everything क्षेत्रज्ञ इज अकर्तारम अवर ट्रू नेचर इज अकर्ता अभोक्ता वन हु सीज इन दिस वे दैट पर्सन इज सींग करेक्टली एक्चुअली वी आर ऑल अकर्ताज ओनली एज लॉन्ग एज वी हैव दिस कर्ता भोक्ता भाव वी आर अन एनलाइट वेन वी बिकम एनलाइट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी इन अवर ट्रू नेचर वी आर नेदर द कर्ताज नॉर द भोक्ताज this is all play of maya which is going on there is a famous uh, song the bhakti song in bengali uh shokole tumari tumari icha icha mai tara tumi tumar karmo tumi karo loke bole koriya mai this is all tumar karma this is maya's karma maya is doing everything prakriti is doing everything but loke bole koriya mai this is what is the wrong vision so we need to correct this vision this is the meaning of surrender no we are not this is all prakriti maya's play is going on here our true nature the kshetragya's true nature is akartaram in this way ya pashyati sa pashyati this person is seeing correctly we are all witness again going back to kshetra and kshetragya one who is knowing the kshetra is kshetragya the drashta the witness and the true nature of this witness is what parabrahman nothing short of that and this parabrahman is absolutely untouched by the activities of maya or the kshetra so one who has got this vision that person is seeing correctly we in our true nature are absolutely akartas we are not the kartas it is maya is doing everything this body the sense organs all the biological activities which is going on here we think even if you just have a slightly deeper vision who is digesting the food are you conscious consciously digesting the food can we do that you we put some morsels of food into our mouth it goes inside the food is digested it turns into blood it turns into flesh and bone and everything how is it happening who is doing it are we doing it consciously none of us it is prakriti is doing that everything all the biological functions which is going on in this body similarly apply that to the entire universe here everything the mover is what it is prakriti it is maya but are we this that is the question we are not this we are the witness of this we are the kshetrakya we are that atma which is akartara one who sees like this that person is seeing correctly same topic consider, uh, uh, continues in the next verse yada bhuta prithag bhavam ekastham anupashyati tata eva ch vistaram brahma sampadyate tada yada bhuta prithag bhavam ekastham anupashyati 
Bhuta Prathak Bhavam. The state of this diversity of things. We are seeing diversity here. Is it the state of the diversity of things or the diversity of living beings. We are seeing so many living beings here, is it not? Men, women, animals, insects, trees, plants. This diversity of living things, living beings, this state, Bhuta Prathak Bhava, this diversity, in short, this diversity, in short, this many. Now, one who sees this diversity and many existing in where? Ekastham Anubashyati. One who sees this diversity rooted in one. Beautiful. Again, it's all the connection between one and the many. This many is rooted in one. This many cannot exist without one. That one is the very basis of this many. So one who sees this many rooted in one. What a beautiful thing. And Tata Evacha Vistaram. And one who sees that this many comes out of one. This many is rooted in one. And the many gets manifested from the one. The manifestation of the many is from where? From that one. One who sees in this way, he or she is seeing correctly. So, yada bhuta prathak bhavam ekastham anupashyati. One who sees the many rooted in one and also the manifestation of many happening in the one. Tata eva chavistaram brahma sampadyate tada. That person will realize Brahman. So, realization of Brahman means what? To understand that everything is rooted in one. The many is rooted in one. And the many is emerging and manifesting from the one. Now this is what is the Upanishad's definition of Brahman. In one of the Upanishads, the Brahman is defined as, defined means Brahman cannot be defined as such, but still from a distance, if the Brahman has to be indicated, it is indicated through this. What Through what? The Taitari Upanishad says, Yato va imani bhutani jayante, Yena jata ni jivanti, yat paryanti, abhisam vishanti, tat brahma, vijigyasa switches. Yatova imani bhutani jayanti. Brahman is that from where this many manifests or emerges. And the many exists in Brahman. And the many dissolves in Brahman. Anyone who understands this correctly, that person will be attaining Brahman. Brahma Sampadyate Tata. So here Krishna is saying, Yada Bhuta Prathak Bhavam Ekastham Anupashyati. When the many is seen rooted in the one, and then many is seen to be manifested from the one. It is from the one, the many is getting manifested, and the many is existing and rooted in the one. One who understands this correctly, that person will be realizing Brahman. Brahma Sampadyate Tata. Now, there may be one question here. Hmm? Today, if you all don't mind, I'll take five more minutes, five minutes more. Hmm? We'll try to finish up this whole chapter. And in the next class, we will summarize. That will be the last class of this 13th chapter. Hmm? So here, the next verse. When we are talking about the one existing in the many, one imperishable existing in the perishable, so we may have the doubt, such a doubt may come in our mind that that means that perhaps maybe that one gets tainted or defiled by its association with the perishable and with the many. Again I repeat, we may have this doubt, such a doubt may crop up in our mind, the doubt is that as this one is existing inside the many, the imperishable is existing inside the perishable. So it may be so that 
that the imperishable or the one gets tainted by the defects of the many by the defects of the perishable dimension the perishable dimension is defective in fact all the impurities are in the kshetra in the kshetra there is absolutely not one ounce of impurity but does it mean that because kshetragya is deeply associated with the kshetra is the kshetragya getting tainted is our true nature getting tainted anywhere it's a beautiful very promising conclusion which comes out of this discussion in our true nature all of us are absolutely pure and sinless and untainted which Shankaracharya repeatedly tells in his Upanishad we are all what? Nitya Shuddha, Nitya Buddha and Nitya Mukta Subhava amazing this should be meditated upon that should be the confidence with which we should be living we are all absolutely pure no impurity can touch any one of us it is not possible that is why Swami Vivekananda puts it in another beautiful way brilliant statement from Vivekananda Swami says it is a sin to call anyone a sinner actually speaking in our true nature nobody can be a sinner because the true nature of every living being is Ishwara absolutely untainted today if somebody is a sinner he is only a potential he is only a potential saint it is only a matter of time when the ignorance and darkness of Maya will go away that very sinner will tomorrow turn out to be a great saint so it is a sin to call somebody a sinner Swami Vivekananda striking remark and Shankaracharya puts it in another way we are all Nitya Shuddha, Nitya Buddha, Nitya Mukta Subhava and this should be constantly asserted in our dealings with the things of the world we should constantly assert our purity we are pure, we are pure no impurity can touch us that should be the confidence of all the Bhaktas and the Sadhakas so here that is what is being conveyed here in the next verse that we are absolutely untainted Krishna says Anaditvat nirgunatvat paramatma yamavyayah sharirasthopikam teya nakaroti nalipyate this Atman is what? Anaditvat Anadi it is beginningless and Nirgunatva it is without any qualities all the qualities belong to the Kshetra Kshetra is beyond all qualities and it is beginningless Anaditvat Nirgunatvat Paramatma Ayam Avyayaha this Paramatma the true nature of Kshetra our true nature is immutable Avyaya means immutable, indestructible. Our true nature is that. And it is anadi, it is beginningless. And it is beyond all the so-called qualities. The qualities belong to Kshetra. Kshetra is actually speaking in its true nature beyond all qualities. Thus being the case, see, our, our true nature is being described here. It is a description of our own true nature. This being the case, what is our true nature? Krishna says, Shari Rastopi Though this Kshetragya is inside this Kshetra, inside this Sharira, is it not? Idam Shariram Kaunteya Kshetra Mitya Bhitiyate. This Shariram, this body is Kshetra. And Kshetragya is where? Inside this very body. It is not anywhere else. Kshetragya means Ishwara actually. This Ishwara, where is Ishwara? In this body itself. Shari Rasthopi Kaunti, though it is inside this very body, na karoti na lipyate, it is absolutely unaffected by the defects of the Kshetra. This Kshetra, whose true nature is Ishvara, though it is existing in this very body, it neither does anything nor does it get tainted, lipyate, it is not affected or tainted by the defects of the Kshetra. What a promising mes message comes out of this verse. That is our true nature. We are actually speaking absolutely untainted by the defects of the so-called body-mind complex. Body-mind thoughts 
there may be some evil thoughts bad thoughts so called impure thoughts but actually if you just go deep and understand yourself to be the drashta you will see that you are dehendriya sanghat vitrikta shuddha and asanga shankaracharya repeatedly keeps on talking about these three things which we have to keep it in mind we in our true nature is what dehendriya sanghat vitrikta tvam number 1 we are that drashta of this dehendriya sanghat we are the witness of whatever is happening in this body mind complex and the defects of the body mind complex cannot touch our true nature dehendriya sanghat vitrikta tvam we are vitrikta vitrikta means different from this body mind complex we are different from kshetra kshetragya is different from kshetra and that kshetragya is absolutely it is untainted so dehendriya sanghat vitrikta that is the first point we are different from this body mind complex and therefore as we are different from this body mind complex shuddha tvam we are absolutely pure no sin can touch us this should be the confidence of all the human beings we are absolutely sinless and pure shuddhatvam and that what asangatvam we are naturally asanga this point was discussed in the earlier class also you cannot get attached it is only owing to indiscrimination that we are getting attached to this dimension in truth this kshetragya is always unattached asango yayam purushah this is what is the great message of the upanishads this purusha this kshetragya this ishvara is actually speaking absolutely unattached so sharirasthopi kaunteya na karoti na lipyati it is absolutely unaffected by the defects of the kshetra and then two illustrations are given here before this chapter ends two illustrations i will take it up fast the first illustration is यथा सर्वगतम आकाशम नोपलिप्यते सर्वत्रावस्थि देहे तथात्मापलिप्यते यथा प्रकाशयत्येक कृष्ण लोकमिम रवि क्षेत्र क्षेत्री तथा कृष्ण प्रकाशयति भारत टू इलस्ट्रेशन कन्वेइंग दिस वेरी ऐडिया दि एब्सल्यूटली प्योर नेचर ऑफ अवर ट्रू से He says, "Yatha sarvakatam saukshmiyat akasham no palipyate." This akasha. This is just an illustration. The illustration is of the space. You take this physical space. You are actually speaking. The subtlest element is akasha, space. It is in this akasha tatvam that this entire universe is floating. Actually speaking, but this akasha is absolutely untainted. by the objects which are floating in the akasha and the akasha is extremely subtle yatha sarvagatam saukshmyat saukshmyat means sukshma this akasha that which is sarvagatam which is all pervading and which is the subtlest element here yatha sarvagatam saukshmyat akasham na upalipyate this akasha is akasha is absolutely untainted by the things floating in the akasha Similarly, सर्वत्रावस्थितो देहे तथात्मा नो पलिप्यते. Similarly, this atma which is existing in everybody, though it is existing in everybody, it is absolutely नो पलिप्यते. It is absolutely untainted by the defects of the so-called kshetra. The other illustration is of the sun. Krishna says. यथा प्रकाशयत्येक कृष्ण लोकमिम रवि इम रवि प्रकाशयति लोकम जस्ट लाइक रवि द सन दिस वन सन विच इज एल्यूमिंग दिस एंटायर वर्ल्ड दिस वन सन इन द स्काय विच इज एल्यूमिंग द एंटायर वर्ल्ड यथा प्रकाशयति एक कृष्ण लोकमिम रवि क्षेत्र क्षेत्री तथा कृष्ण प्रकाशयति भारत similarly this entire kshetra is being illumined by kshetragya 
this kshetra is being illumined by kshetragya the light of consciousness it is this light of consciousness which is illumining this entire universe now in the second example it is very important if you all remember that illustration of the sun reflected in the pots there are 100 pots with water inside that and there is one sun up in the sky and that sun is getting reflected in the waters of the pot and the reflected sun as it is ignorant and as it has got identified with the one particular pot it is in trouble if that reflected sun begins to find out its own source it will end up in that supreme sun up and from there what will be its knowledge it is absolutely untainted by the defects of the pots is it not as long as that reflected sun was identified with one particular pot it was thinking that it is tainted it is impure and all those things but actually is the sun tainted by the pots and the waters inside the pot it is absolutely untainted and it is absolutely distinct two things vatirikta and shuddhatva this is precisely our true nature our true nature is absolutely vatirikta vatirik means absolutely different from this body mind complex and it is absolutely pure though it is existing though, though that ishwara is existing in this very body mind complex it is absolutely untainted by the defects of this kshetra the last verse the last verse krishna says kshetra kshetra gyor evam antaram gyana chakshusha bhuta prakriti moksham cha ye vidur yanti te param ye vidur yanti te param one who knows in this way that person attains the highest so knowing what krishna says kshetram kshetra kshetra gyor evam antaram this distinction between kshetra and kshetra kya kshetra kshetra gyor evam antaram jnana chakshusha through jnana chakshu one who clearly understands the distinction between what is kshetra and what is kshetra kya means kshetra kshetra gya vibhaga the clear discrimination between what is kshetra and what is kshetra kya one who knows this through jnana chakshu through the eye of the wisdom this eye of the wisdom is amazing thing this eye of the wisdom comes to us by following the instructions of the scriptures and guru there is no other source there is no other way it is only when we follow the instructions of the scriptures and the guru this eye of wisdom opens up in us through that eye of eye of the wisdom jnana chakshu when we clearly see the distinction between the kshetra and kshetra kya and then what not only that bhuta prakriti moksha what is the meaning of bhuta prakriti moksha literally it means the destruction of maya bhuta prakriti bhuta means this entire the living entities which we are seeing this bhuta this entire all the things which we are seeing here existing they are all the creation of maya only prakriti bhuta prakriti moksha means destruction destruction of maya and maya's manifestation maya and maya's karyam maya and maya's effect whatever we are seeing these are all nothing but maya and maya's effect when this destruction of maya takes place what happens te yati ye vidur te yanti param he attains the supreme in short when through the jnana chakshu we succeed in clearly discriminating between kshetra and kshetragya and realizing the true nature of kshetragya as nothing but ishvara means realizing ourselves to be that sun absolutely untouched by the play of the different parts which are all nothing but kshetra sun is there which is kshetragya and here there are the sun, so many parts and the waters which is all kshetra which is all creation of maya so one who clearly understands this distinction between the kshetragya and the kshetra and one who puts an end to this maya that person attains the supreme so here ends this 13th chapter and 
in the next class which will be the last class of this in this season 31st uh, i think it will be 31st august hmm, 31st august and the 4th august i am 4th september i am leaving for mayavati so in the next class we shall in one hour try to summarize this entire chapter whatever we have studied in last uh, eight sessions including today's session and today is the eighth session so we shall summarize the whole thing in the next class so in short in today's class the essence was that replacing our wrong vision with the right vision ya pashyati sa pashyati we are all having a defective vision we need the right spectacle that spectacle is given by guru and the shastras and when we get the right spectacle we begin to see things clearly initially we were seeing the many now we begin to see the one in the many finally a time will come when the many will not be seen only the one alone will be seen we stop here om shanti 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 hari om that's it